good morning, good afternoon, or good evening. This is Rakia Bernard. I play Doc on Van Helsing, and you are listening to Comic Con Radio. I had a dream once. Our world had ended. Vampires had taken over. And I was the only one that could stop them. It was no dream. I'm nothing special. Somebody thought you were. You want me? Here I am. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy signing in for Comic-Con Radio. Coverage of pop culture events from around the globe. Amazing interviews with celebrities. Daily recaps and reviews of popular television. The Walking Dead. Z Nation. Van Helsing. DC Titans. Flash. The Legends of Tomorrow. Black Lightning. American Horror Story. Green Arrow. Movie reviews. Everything Comic-Con and fandom from around the globe. Comic-Con Radio. Get ready to enter our universe. Let's go. Go, go. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is your boy Galaxy on another amazing episode of Comic Con Radio. Today we have a very special gal. She's really cool and off the hook. We've wanted her on the show for the entire season of Van Helsing. Now she's on. We have Rokia Bernard on Comic Con Radio. Rokia, what's up? How are you? Uh, not much. I'm good. Thanks so much for having me. Awesome. So I pronounce your name Rokia Bernard. I know you don't pronounce it that way, but I hope. It's not bad. <laughs> <laughs> Why do you pronounce it that way? I don't know. It's just, you know, a tendency because I have a lot of friends with the name Rukhia. So there's all sorts of ways to say it. But, uh, you know, however you say it is well, the best way. My way is Rukhia because I know Rukhia in varying forms of Rukhia um, is an Islamic name. Um, I'm not Islamic. My uh, heritage is from Kenya and they speak Swahili there. So it loosely translates into She Flies High in Swahili in Kenya. And uh, but I have a friend in Toronto and her name is Rokaya and she's Islamic. I remember meeting her and be like, Oh my god, someone who heard my name sort of kind of <laughs> That's pretty cool. <laughs> and it meant something pretty similar. You have a global name. And you say it Rakia. Rakia. So I'm gonna say Rakia. Like like IKEA. Like there you Ikea. Go. Or Kia, I'm gonna your say car. Rakia. So Kia's I'm not gonna try to be the cool. Best cell okay? phones out there that you can drop a zillion times. Nokia phones, Rakia. <laughs> <laughs> well it's a lovely name anyway you pronounce it. There Thank you go. Thank you. <laughs> So you were born and raised in Canada. Is that true? In Toronto. Yeah. Toronto. Yeah, yeah. Toronto. You are one of a thousand amazing actors and actresses from the Canadian area. It's like 95% of my guests these days because we cover everything fandom from A to Zippo. Canada is the place to be. And on every show I make a little funny. I'm like, every morning we have to salute Canada because without the Canadian actors, we wouldn't have arrow or van helsing or flash or supernaturals or anything and supernaturals paved the way and we got to say god bless mm -hmm. canada for all the amazing talent coming from there and crew and those are just the vancouver shows there's so much that's done up here in canada and toronto montreal nova scotia newfoundland calgary winnipeg like there's a lot of film and TV made here in Canada. We've got top-notch talent and crew to make it all happen. That's it. And that's what I tell everyone. If it wasn't for the top-notch talent and the teams that put these amazing sets together, you wouldn't be there. There's a new mm -hmm. amazing show called Deadly Class that's filmed in Canada. And it's mm -hmm. just yeah. awesomely amazing. A dear friend of mine, Olivia Chang, is on it. And she just had a blast working on it. How do you feel about Van Helsing's growth? Because I know you got a new showrunner, Jonathan Lloyd Walker, Lloyd which is Walker. an amazing, cool, mm -hmm. came on the show, amazing to talk with. How do you feel about that growth? Neil LeBute, our original showrunner, uh, was an amazing leader. And uh, JLW um, had been producing and executive producing kind of under him the whole time from the very beginning. And I remember watching him and being like, oh, you take it moves. John is a tap dancer because he's always quick to uh, figure out a great solution, which actually usually helps the show even more. Um, and so for him to move into the showrunner position 
just seemed so natural and expected. I remember telling a friend of mine, you know, I full on expect to be auditioning for John uh, in the future. And it happened way sooner than I even expected it, but it totally makes sense. And he's great at it. Yeah. And I think it's going to be amazing because he's also a really great actor and he's part of so many different shows. So he's going to bring that aspect of both actor, producer, now showrunner. I think it's going to be amazing, but let's talk about you. Your character on the show has developed so well. You are so fierce yeah. now. You're fierce. Oh, thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thanks. Thanks. It's been quite the journey, to say the least. <laughs> it has been. It has been. From season one, where she was a kitty cat, scaredy cat, and just out for herself, to now, like, mm-hmm. no, stay out of her way. Now, do you see a little bit of yourself in her? Um, I feel my, more myself in her now than I... Uh, than I did before. I'm, I'm a solutions based person and I'm not really scared of much. So uh, the earlier seasons, it was way more of a character stretch for me. And now where doc is at feels a little bit more of a Kia. I mean, I'm, I'm still much more of a fighter than she is like even physically, but uh, it, 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 she's feeling way close to me. And after playing a character for four years, you, you, they become a part of you, you know? I've noticed that the first couple of seasons you were playing the character and now I notice in this last season the character is trying to be you and I can't wait for this next season because you have some amazing new actors. I don't I won't say anything. I know a lot about the show, <laughs> but uh, I okay. think the show is going to be oh my god, it's going to be amazing. Just where it it's going to pick up from, it's going to be awesome and where you're picking up from is going to be awesome. Can you say a little bit or you got to keep those lips shut? Well, you know, I like my legs and uh, so I I can't really (laughs) say too much. Otherwise, JLW will take them out. Um. (laughs) Well, I got to get JLW back on the show and squeeze him then. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Squeeze him for the info. Yeah, no, the season is really shaping up uh, to be bigger and uh, very interesting. There's a lot of new characters on the show who are just expanding the world that much more. Vanessa is discovering more and more of who she really is. It's super exciting what's happening right now. How do you like the love interest part? Is that something that Oh, was very sharp. You're like, yes, I love it going in that direction. I felt it was kind of a natural direction. I remember talking to uh, John Walker at uh, the top of uh, season two, and uh, we were shooting the stuff in the barn, um, which and was where you know the triage was. And I was like, this is interesting. A love interest for Doc. And he was just like, you know, in his voice, you know, well, we were just thinking, you know, who's the most unlikely person to fall in love? <laughs> and we're like, that was Doc. <laughs> and uh, and uh, he, uh, and I was like, yeah, I, I, I didn't think, like, I always thought of Doc as someone who has never been in love, isn't really pursuing love, and especially in the apocalypse, is just trying to survive. But if she died, she wouldn't really fight it that much. She was kind of on a giving up kind of path in for her in it for herself. You know what I mean? And bumping into someone like uh, Jolene, whom uh, Caroline Cave brilliantly plays, was um, was like a second chance for her, and has offered her an opportunity to grow as a person for not only herself but what she can do for others. And, um, and so I loved the idea, and whether the love interest was female or male for me that that didn't make much of a difference Uh, i don't know if doc since she's been so indecisive particularly at the beginning of uh, season one and two i don't even know if she really considers herself gay as opposed to she just she just really likes jolene and they're trying to live they're not just trying to survive. They're trying to live. Gotcha. And I think that's what makes their story really interesting in a world of pure survival in the face of violence. They're trying to live a life of love. 
And, um, and, you know, they're not even trying to save the day. I mean, they get thrown into those situations, but they're not even trying to do it. They're just trying to be with each other. And that is it. And I think that is hard enough to do, whether you're living in an apocalypse or in real life. And that's what really compels me about their relationship more than it being a gay relationship. Way more than that is the love that they have for each other. And that love's going to get you through season four. That's what's going to happen. Into <laughs> we'll season see. five. We'll see. No, you're going to get signed <laughs> into season five because this year is going to get really juicy. Look, you're trying to create an antidote. The freaking vampires are daylight walkers now and they're going nuts. So, isn't uh, that crazy? Alex oh, Pavlovic is going crazy. He wants to kill somebody. <laughs> Things are just. <laughs> I remember reading the script with the daywalkers, and I was like, what the, what has just happened? And, um, and it was just like, this is a game changer, guys. Daywalkers changes everything. Oh, yeah. That just added yeah. an extra two seasons. And Jennifer mm-hmm. Chione is like the leader of the daywalkers after she cut off... Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, scabs, skibby whips, and now they're like this powerful <laughs> duo. <laughs> I told her that on the show, now. and she was like, Yeah, I love that moment. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, those are two characters that have really stood the test of time. Um, it's, uh, Roland's character, Scab. He wasn't supposed to be a part of the main cast from the very beginning, and that guy's commitment to his craft is bar none the highest. He always has his iPod or some music going right before his scenes are shooting. He's working his vocal so he can get that quality of voice that he has. And it's really freakish. And even his movements, you know. And Jen, or her character as well, wasn't supposed to make it this long. But those two actors are outstanding. And I'm so happy that they're still around because they add so much to the show. A lot of danger to the show. And uh, yeah, no, I'm just so happy for them. Well, the show has become this amazing thing. And I've always said on all my shows throughout Comic-Con Radio is that drama, Mm. action, little parts here and there that seclude certain characters is the right formula for an amazing series. Because what's going on, there's these little sub stories in the main Mm -hmm. story and it's like grouped Mm -hmm. people out and that's what's so amazing because you can't wait to see these little group stories going on it's like story within Mm -hmm. a story within a story and and now you have your own which is amazing Mm -hmm. but you are part of everyone like your hands are in Mm -hmm. everybody's stories which is great (laughs) and you know what just a little bit and you know what? I heard that you're what? a really good dancer. <laughs> I, I'm not Femme bad. Fat I'm not dancers? Bad. Was that your dance true? <laughs> oh, Femme Fat Dancers. Oh, my God. That is old school. Um, that was a hip-hop troupe I, I uh, joined. I had to audition for it, too. When I was in theater school, and I was getting really into dance um a lot of like jazz and ballet type dance and i wanted to get more into hip-hop and so i was like oh i'll audition, I'll, I'll audition for this group and it was so great because like they did shows around toronto and i got to perform and those girls were amazing a lot of them ended up working with uh the director x who is now a prolific music video director and film uh director but I never went that far with it, but I've always danced my whole life. In fact, before this uh, interview, I just came from a dance class. Dang, <laughs> I'm always look at dancing. you. Look yeah, at you. I'm always dancing. I want to see Rakia dance because on the show, yeah, get me a movie. you're just like <laughs> running around everywhere and it doesn't seem yeah. like you have that dance vibe, but like you're an amazing dancer. So we have to get you in a Hallmark movie where you're dancing the whole time. Yeah, yeah, let's go pitch it to them, huh? Let's do it. You yeah. know, I get the coolest people. I love you all out there. They're the best people. But you never know who's listening. And sometimes I say certain things and then I get a call or an email from a guest. They're like, oh, I got on a show. And, you know, it's, yeah. you never know. You never know. We'll see you, you dancing. You never know. <laughs> dancing the night away in some Christmas Hallmark movie. <laughs> yeah, maybe, yeah. That would be cool. That would be cool. That would be amazing. I would love to do that. I would totally love to do that. 
you know, not only have you been in so many fandom TV shows, but recently you're on a lot of Hallmark movies, which mm. you are known for the sci-fi fandom stuff, and now you're getting into that world. Which one do you love the most, yeah. or are they equally in, you're in love with both sides? You know, it's interesting, because I love both. I'm, um, I'm not one to really stick to one genre. I get bored very easily. And nine times out of 10, I'll finish a season of that health thing. It'll feel cathartic. And I'm like, all I want to do is something light and bubbly and fun and pretty. And, and Hallmark has been so great with getting me in there to do exactly that. Um, and, uh, and I, and I, I quite like working with Hallmark right now. I know that they're looking for a lot more diversity. I'm happy to lend my face in that effort of theirs. And I'm really glad they're moving in that direction. So it's been a nice symbiotic kind of, uh, pairing between, uh, Hallmark and them working with me, which I'm, I'm so happy to do. That's really great to hear. And that's great that you're so happy because many, actors or actresses it takes them a while to get happy in their own skin and to be part of certain shows and movies but you're you seem like you love it like you're on both worlds you're showing both sides of you know rakia and that's amazing to see because for the past three to four years everybody's seen the dark side and now you're noticed a lot by that van helsing is an amazing television show and now you're in these movies mm -hmm. and you're showing a different side and they're like okay there she goes she's making it yeah <laughs> i'm trying i'm trying and i'm trying to have a diverse <laughs> career and <laughs> keep myself entertained too you know with different challenges well you know you're a fandom favorite you've been on supernaturals yeah i appeared in i believe season seven and i died um <laughs> and then <laughs> in season 13 lucky number 13 or was it 14 no it must have been 13 um i uh appeared um and i didn't die that time and that one was a very very cool episode to work with and uh, I'm so sad and like, but happy for for Jensen and Jared and the whole Supernatural team because they're they're wrapping up now. Have you heard? Yeah, this is the last they're, season. It's that's it. No more yeah, Supernaturals. That's it. And you know what a run for a show. Fifteen seasons. Like they're beginning to become Coronation Street. <laughs> well, you know they had that little rule that every two years, if they kill you off, you could come back. It was every seven years um, if you were a guest star. If, if it were a more minor character, I think you could get back every two years. But my first episode that I did was a guest star, so I wasn't allowed anywhere close to that show, uh, especially oh. <laughs> because I died uh, for seven years. And so when I did the second episode, it was funny. I I didn't want to like get in there and be like remember me right <laughs> so <laughs> i showed up and i was like hey how's it going to the day and my first scene was with uh jensen and he was like wait a second i know you i know you you've been on the show before haven't you you've been on the show before you know please remind me and i was so impressed i mean those boys shoot 20 odd episodes give or take a season you know they have thousands of actors going in and out of there i was like how do you remember and he's like no 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 I definitely remember you <laughs> and, uh, they're gonna remember you so wonderful you're <laughs> very, you're very uh noticeable because you're not only you but you're also doc on van helsing come on who cannot notice you <laughs> come on well, I, they probably well, binge oh, watch so your sweet. show <laughs> <laughs> well I was so impressed and humbled and like and then just to like talk with them the whole time especially because there was a rapport now and actually a lot of the uh people from supernatural a lot of the crew have been there since day one of the very first episode um that show was incredible to work on just it was actually really really special and it makes sense that they lasted so long and i don't know i just feel honored that i got to to do it twice you know? Yeah, that's really amazing yeah. that they brought you back on. Yeah. And on Van Helsing, who would you say is your counterpart that's on and off camera? Someone that you have connected with that, you know, gets you through today? Oh, yeah, Ponovic for sure. Alex Ponovic. I mean, I think Alex Ponovic Everybody loves Ponovic that guy. Everybody. I love him too. <laughs> like, there's, there's not one person 
and he knows everyone in Hollywood. He knows everyone. He's like, oh, yeah, that guy, yeah, we, we just went out for drinks last week. I'm like, some obscure actor who, you know, who's only done one thing, you know, like, he knows them. <laughs> and, um, and, and there's not one person that I have ever heard speak anything negative about that guy. And he is so genuinely full of love and so much creativity. He's always exploring. None of the scenes that we shoot, in my mind, I don't think they're ever final for him because in, in between takes, I'd be like, oh, oh, Ricky, I just had an idea. What if, you know, I'm, I'm going to try this. Thing. Just just throw with me, okay? And then, you know, and then we'll go. And I'm like, oh, that was good. That was interesting. And, and, I, and I love working with actors like that. And even off camera, like, we'll go out for drinks or he'll help me with an audition. You know, Panovic, Panovic is that guy. Um, and also Caroline. I mean, I think that was inevitable. I, I knew Caroline before Van Helsing. We did a Lifetime movie years ago together. So we met then. And then when she was cast uh, as my love interest, I remember texting her and being like, oh, my God, this is going to be great. And, you know, she's quite the actor's actor, if that makes any sense. She knows her craft inside and out. And she is so smart about it all. And, um, and so we discussed a lot in depth about the relationship between Jolene and Doc. And through that, you know, you you end up having personal conversations with each other. And we have such a great rapport and friendship with each other outside of uh, work. So I'd have to say those two I mean, we Kel- um, I mean, so many. I and mean, Kelly Overton and I were great friends, although we haven't shared the screen in, I think, a couple seasons. I think we had one scene last season, and, <laughs> and then our storylines went in two separate directions. So we see each other more, way more off screen than we do on screen. And who else? There was one other person. Hmm. John like, Walker. Dig, I mean, you know, <laughs> like it's 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 such a it's such a family. You know, it's really it really is. Um, you know what I think? Um, I think you love yeah, everyone. You think? I think you love everyone. I think you get along with everyone because that show is such a family show. I've noticed. I've chatted with a bunch of the cast members, and yeah. everybody speaks so highly of each other. So I think it's all love. It's all amazing. I just think you're forgetting think right so now. That's too. all. <laughs> I I I just I like everyone. I was just like, oh, and then like even um, Hillary Jardine who plays who played Susan and came back uh, in season two and season three. Like I'm great friends with her. Um, and, you know, I always think like, thank you, Van Helsing, for giving me friends. Do you know what I mean? Because at the end of the day, it's just a TV show. Someone on Netflix is like, oh, what am I going to watch? I'm going to watch this. I'm going to watch that. You know, at least I get friendship out of it. <laughs> That's and, a good sound. Uh, and friendship That's a good voice people. you just did right now. Was that the, like a producer? Oh, which one? Oh, no, I was just kind of like how I sound. And I'm like going to bed. I'm like, oh, I'm going to watch it. Um, but you know like at the end of the day if you can get friendship out of it and friends like with people who you have mad respect for i i don't think there's anything better than that you know well you know what in season two everybody was upset because you know you took a couple of the characters and you left them behind, but then you redeemed yourself in season three. And I think season four is going to be even more amazing for you. Have you noticed your social media growing because of Van Helsing and the fan base growing to a whole different type of people like just befriending you now? Yeah. Beautiful. The fanship that we have is so incredibly loyal, incredibly loyal. You know, I've guest starred on other shows, like like you mentioned, Supernatural or Travelers, and, you know, and the fandom watches all the other shows. But when people are like, oh, it's Rakia Bernard on Travelers, the hell's in dress will shit me. Like, oh, she's on Van Helsing. Great to see that she's on the Travelers, right? Like, they kind of own the character that I've given. And I was like, man, that is freaking loyal as all hell, <laughs> um, which, is, which is great. And so I, I have, I, I don't know, I have mad love. I mean, the show doesn't happen without the fans. Right? The it just fan, simply it's doesn't. It's all about the fans, Rakia. It's all about the fans. They're yeah. lovely and they love you to death and they're going to love you for the rest of your life. You will always be Doc. You will always be, Ugh. 
your characters on each show. On Travelers, you'll always be Dr. Carol, and you'll always be Maggie <laughs> from, you know, um, uh, your movie Colossal. You're gonna, you're always gonna yeah. be Agent Hobbs. You're always gonna be all of them to these fans because they're so amazing. Without them, we're nothing. And you've been in over 67 projects and you're going to be in yeah. another 200 and you're going to grow <laughs> and people love you. Thank we're, you. I, I love them too, man. And we're so happy to have you on the show. And is there anything you want to say to the fans before we start heading out? I would just like to say thank you so much. Thank you so much for being a support. You've made the difference for me, you know. That's really nice of you to say that. And they love yeah. you back. And I'm not going to squeeze you yeah. about Van Helsing because I probably know uh, so much myself and I don't want to say anything. Because <laughs> <And laughs> that's a show we've really zoned on. Our whole staff here loves everybody on it. And oh, we can't wait so to have much. you back. We need to have you back anytime, during the season. Anytime. Just so happy to talk to you guys. And I'm so happy um, and grateful for the fanship and yeah, you keep us going, so we'll give you more, you know? Thank and you anytime. So, thank you so much. We love it. So with that said, Rakia, this is the show. We're not going to squeeze you. We're not going to push you to get uncomfortable. We know what's going on, and we love you, Doc. <laughs> and with that said, we're going to sign you out. <laughs> Are you ready? Are Thanks you ready? So much, Galaxy. I'm ready. Let's do it. <laughs> okay, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is your boy, Galaxy, with, and I'm going to say it correct now, Rakia Bernard on another amazing Yay. episode of Comic-Con Radio. Rakia, we got to blow some kisses out for them so they can save it and use it while they're in watching you on Van Helsing. Ready? Yes. Three, ready. two, one. One wow, a billion kisses. <laughs> oh yeah, Rakia just kisses. kissed all you girls, guys, whatever. <laughs> Take it, grab it, hold it, <laughs> and use the kisses when you're watching her on TV and in the movies. We uh, love you and peace. Love you too. <laughs> peace. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening. This is Galaxy signing out from another amazing episode of Comic-Con Radio. Tune in for your daily shows of Comic-Con Radio. Go to comic-con-radio.com. Reach us on social media, Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, at Comic-Con Radio. You can call us toll-free right now. 800-976-0305. 800-976-0305. Comic-Con Radio, taking the world one listener at a time.